Welcome back again to another chemistry video specifically for the HSC and we're going to be looking at how we measure stratospheric ozone. We have in previous videos looked at the importance of ozone as an upper atmosphere radiation shield and we've looked at the destruction of ozone, both natural destruction and of course synthetic destruction, but how do we actually measure these ozone um, concentrations in the stratosphere? Well, the first thing is I guess we talk about direct measurements, right, direct measurements. Uh, the first one is when we're using spectrometers that are up in satellites. Now there's multiple spectrometers being used by different satellites, but the one that's um, easiest to remember is the Nimbus 7. Okay, so the Nimbus 7 is the satellite on which this device is known, on which this device is placed. It's called the Toto, Total Ozone Mapping Spectrometer, or TOMS, and it's on the Nimbus 7 satellite. It is on, that spectrometer is on other satellites, but with the Nimbus 7, that's the one we're going to be looking at. Now what it actually does, it measures concentration of ozone indirectly. And by that, what happens is it measures the incoming UV radiation. So it measures the amount of incoming UV radiation from the sun. And then it, it measures the amount of UV reflectance or albedo from the atmosphere. And so um, the difference between those two values gives you the total amount of um, ozone. Because if you think about it, if you've got UV light coming in, and if there's no ozone, then there's going to be no reflectance from the atmosphere. However, if there's more ozone, there's going to be more reflectance. So the degree of reflectance or scattering from the um, outgoing UV radiation at a specific wavelength then that's going to give you an indication of how much UV is there. So you compare that to the initial value and then you get a, a value for the amount of um, ozone. Um, now so it measures the reflectance or the albedo and therefore it measures the change in UV. So that is an approximation of the concentration of ozone. Now it does that in columns of air right? And it takes eight measurements a second or something like that. And so it takes thousands of measurements and it does that, of course, because it's in a, a satellite, it's around, uh, it's orbit around the Earth. And so therefore, it gets a very, very great coverage, about 98, 99% coverage of the Earth. There's a few areas in the poles which it doesn't quite reach. But it's an indirect measurement of ozone concentrations. The second way in which we can monitor ozone concentrations is by um, emitting lasers into the atmosphere. So laser measurements. So what happens here is there are some lasers near to, on telescopes. They uh, shoot a laser beam at a specific wavelength up into the atmosphere and the degree of um, absorbance of that laser, because they have a guide laser and a, and, a, and a measurement laser, the degree of measurement so the, deg the degree of absorption determines the concentration of ozone. So multiple layers are fired from the ground in telescopes um, and the comparison of the, the uh, standard or guide laser as well as the measurement laser gives the amount of absorption of um, laser light at a specific wavelength that's characteristic to the vib vibrational frequency of the bonds in the ozone molecule. And so therefore we can work out the concentration of ozone. So there's two direct measurements that we can use to monitor the concentration of ozone. Now we can do indirect measurements as well. So indirect measurements would be things such as a greater incidence of UV um, uh, hitting the ground and UV um, cancers, um, etc. So that's like indirect measurement. So the health effects or the effects of the UV radiation but we want to get more direct measurements. And so when this was done around the Earth, we noticed that there was a hole, an ozone hole, and, uh, and therefore we needed to do something about that. And so that was back in the early uh, 80s. So what did we actually do? Well, I want you to watch the section. In fact, probably another video, because I'll make another video, we'll keep this short and sweet. We'll make another video on what we actually do um, to try and change our use of um, ozone and ozone depleting gases. Okay, I um, hope that makes sense. It's a little bit early in the morning so forgive the stuttering and I'll see you in the next video.